Okay, I have here a copy of the New World Translation of the Holy Scriptures and also the Greek text also that uh, is put out by the Watchtower uh, Bible and Tract Society, the Kingdom Interlinear Translation of the Greek Scriptures. And I found some pretty startling things in here. And I would like you to watch this um, and see what you think. Here we, we have a couple things here. Let me get to the page. Let me zoom in here. Kingdom Interlinear, Interlinear Translation of the Greek Scriptures. And in Interlinear, if I can say it here, is uh, you'll have Greek on one side, English on the other. Uh, but basically it says here, New Testament is the original Greek by B.F. Westcott and F.J.A. Hort, 1881. Okay, um, we're going to see more about that as we continue here, but New World Bible Translation Committee 1985 edition is what you have. And here you can see the Watchtower uh, Bible and Tract Society of Pennsylvania, copyright 1985. This is not, this is a Jehovah's Witness publication. Now it goes into a couple different things here, and problem number one, I showed this in other videos, but I'm going to show it one more time. Greek text, the Greek text that we have used as the basis for the New World Translation is a widely uh, accepted Westcott and Hort text of 1881 by reason of its acknowledged excellence. But we have also taken into consideration other texts, including those prepared by D. Eberhard Nessel, the Spanish Jesuit scholar Jose Maria Bover, and another Jesuit scholar, A. Merck. The UBS text of 1975 United Bible Society is what the UBS stands for. The Nestle Alon text of 1979 were consulted to update the critical apparatus of this edition. Okay. So, and of course, there have been um, newer ones that have come out since then. But right here, the fact is the Jesuits are one of their missions, one of their goals is what's called the Counter Reformation to bring all people back under the authority of Rome. Now this would give me great cause for concern if this was the Greek text underlying my scriptures. And that would be a bad thing. But I just want to show you a couple things here. We're going to look at some verses. I'll zoom in a little bit farther so you can really see. Here we have Luke chapter 4, verses 9 through 16. You'll see over here the Greek word is Lord. But here they have it translated Jehovah. See that? Now look at the significance of this. Luke chapter 4 is where Jesus is out in the wilderness and the devil comes and tempts him. And uh, in answer, Jesus said to him, It is said, You must not put Jehovah your God to the test. Here it says, Lord, the God of you, you shall test uh, out Lord the God of you. Okay? You can't do direct translation from Greek to English, you know. It's a different language. But the point is here, the word is Lord. Why did they change it to Jehovah? Well, maybe because other places Jesus is called Lord. So you got to change it to Jehovah. And you say, well, I think that this is a better translation. Well, then look at what's written here. You must not put Jehovah, your God, to the test. When did Satan put Jehovah, God, to the test? Think about that. Who's being tested here? Jesus Christ is. So then according to this, you could actually say then, Jesus is Jehovah, God. Hmm. Kind of a problem there. Okay, let's look at another one here. Here you have... John chapter 8 through chapter 9 and Jesus is speaking with the Pharisees and, and things and he says before Abraham was I am okay but here it says before Abraham to become I am now they got very angry there at Jesus because the fact is this is a title of God back in the book of Exodus he says I am that I am that's God's title. So when Jesus said that, the Jews in his day knew what he was saying. He was calling himself God. And they got very angry about that. Look over here. 
before Abraham came into existence, I have been. Wait a second. According to their own Greek text, it's I am. But here it says, I have been. So there's a problem there. This is what we call dishonesty. <laughs> Some very serious dishonesty. I am, I have been. Why the cover-up? Because the text proves that Jesus Christ is God. Okay, here we have John chapter 14, 29 through 15, verse 4. Okay, 15 verse 4 says here, uh, remain, in you, or re remain you in me and I in you. Okay, and here of course you have the thing of uh, the words that I have spoken, uh, they will be in you and Christ will be in you is what the passage is talking about. Okay, but here they change it. It's changed to union. It's not in you. It's just union. See, another problem there. And again, there's no support. The true reading there is in you. Okay? Uh, again, things are being changed there. It's very crooked. Now look here, we have John chapter 20, verse 24 through 29. Here we have verse 29. Uh, Thomas saying after Jesus was resurrected from the dead the Lord of me and the God of me capital G God of me Thomas confessed that Jesus Christ was God look over here in answer Thomas said to him my Lord and my God now according to Jehovah's Witness teaching Jesus Christ was Michael the archangel. He was not God manifest in the flesh. So Jesus here should correct Thomas's error, right? But let's look. Jesus said to him, "Because you have seen me, uh, because you have seen me, have you believed? Happy are those who do not see and yet believe." And it goes on into how Jesus was performing miracles. Why didn't Jesus say, no, no, Thomas, I, uh, I'm just Michael the Archangel? Why didn't he correct him? Because Jesus Christ is God. And right there it says it in the New World Translation and even in this Nestle's Greek text. Right there. It says it. How are you going to get away from that? Okay, here we have Christ in you. This is Romans chapter 8, verses 6 through 12. But if Christ is in union with you, he's not in you, he's just in union with you. Uh, there's a problem there. This is not honest translation. There's an agenda here to erase the fact that Jesus Christ is God. He is also the Holy Spirit that is in you. See the problem? Very dishonest. And there are many, many more I could go to, but we're only going to hit a couple today. Here we have it again. Jesus Christ in you. Right there you see it in this Greek text. Jesus Christ is in union with you. Okay, well, you can be in union with a lot of people. You know, right now, locally, we have a, a steel plant that the people are out protesting because they're part of a labor union. That's not the same as Jesus Christ in you. See the deception. Jesus Christ in you. Jesus Christ is in union with you. Add thou not. The Bible says, Unto the word, lest, uh, had thou not unto the word, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Right there. Added words. Okay, another place here. Colossians 1 16 through 21. Here we have um, Jesus Christ being the creator of the world. 
because by means of him all other things were created in the heavens and upon the earth. Now, see the word other? Because in him it was created the all things in the heavens and upon the earth. That one says all. Uh, could you please show me where the word other is? You say, well, that's that doesn't look very honest, does it? No, it doesn't. And look down here. It's done again. All things. All other things. Where's other at? It's not in the text. All other things. Okay? Again, you're seeing it. Where's the other things? All things, all other things. You see, if Jesus Christ created all things, then that would prove that he is God. But if it's just all other things, well, you know, he, God created some and Jesus, you know, created some other things. Deception. If you are a Jehovah's Witness, you have been lied to. Here again we see, and this is there are many of these, I'm only showing a few, but you're seeing there the word is Lord, and it's changed to Jehovah. Okay? And the Lamb, also the Lamb. See, this says God and the Lamb. Two different titles for the same being. This says Jehovah God, also the Lamb. So it makes it two different beings. God, the Father, and Jesus Christ, Michael the Archangel. You see the deception? The words end, not also. Okay, that's the kind of lies that you're going to get. Now let me just show you some other things here quickly. This is the current scriptures used by the Jehovah's Witnesses. This corrupt thing, and I just showed you from the Greek text that there are many mistranslated words in here that are done on purpose to cover up the fact that Jesus Christ is God. But now I have here, this is an old Jehovah's Witness Bible. This is when they first came out. This one's a pretty old one. A, a friend of mine from Canada sent me this. And uh, you can see their important explanation and Jehovah and they're saying whenever uh, the words God and Lord occur in all capital letters. The name in the original Hebrew is Jehovah. Okay, and they get into some of that stuff. And you go through here. But you say, well, what was the original Bible that was used by the Watchtower back before they used the Catholic uh, New World Trans or Catholic Nestle's text to create their New World Translation? Right there you have it. Authorized by King James or all the known as the authorized or King James version. Okay, this is a real Bible right here. Now I've seen some. This one doesn't have it, but uh, I've seen some. What they actually have, whole areas where they're correcting the text. Okay, because see the King James Bible is very clear. It teaches that Jesus Christ is God manifest in the flesh. And this. Bible here is the only one that does not come from the Vatican's manuscripts. I want to just show you a couple of verses here quickly. And this, like I said, this was originally a Jehovah's Witness um, translation. Okay, we're going to start out here in 1 Timothy chapter 3 and go to verse 16. Without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Now see, look at this. God was manifest in the flesh. God, when was God in the flesh? Well, if you're a Christian, you'll understand that that was Jesus Christ that came here to be born of the Virgin Mary and to live a sinless life and to be crucified on a cross to pay for your sins. He was justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles. Okay? Jesus Christ, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ is preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. 
So you can't make this just Father God sitting up in heaven. He was down here on the earth, manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and then he was received back up into glory. This is the way it originally, this was the what the Jehovah's Witnesses were first using. But see, that's a real problem for the belief system of the Jehovah's Witnesses. So they had to change it. They had to look for a corrupted text. Here we have the newer New World Translation. Indeed, the sacred secret of this godly devotion is admittedly great. He was made manifest in flesh. See? They had to change it. From God was manifest in the flesh to He was made manifest in the flesh, which doesn't do anything for anybody. Because Jesus Christ was manifest in the flesh, I'm manifest in the flesh, you're manifest in the flesh, everybody's manifest in the flesh. But if you say God was manifest in the flesh, like this edition, this King James Bible that the Jehovah's Witnesses used to use, that presents a real problem. See, it had to be changed. Let me show you another scripture. Here we have Ephesians. This is chapter 3. That's because it starts here, but this is chapter 2 here. Look at verse 8. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. This is what Jehovah's Witnesses were reading before the New World Translation came out. Now let's look at how this thing has been messed up in the New World Translation. By this undeserved kindness, indeed, you have been saved through faith, and this not owing to you, it is God's gift. No, it is not owing to works, in order that no man should have ground for boasting. Uh, that really didn't clear it up very much, but the fact is, you can still see, even though it's distorted and perverted by using the Catholic Nestle's text, you can still see there, salvation comes through faith, and not of you, it comes from God, not of works. You can still see it there. Now let me show you some more. Okay, here we have Romans chapter 3. We're going to jump down to verse 10 in the King James Bible. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way, they are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. This is what God thinks of man right here. God does not is not impressed by your good works, your good deeds, your going out door to door and trying to get converts. God's not impressed by it. He says, you're not righteous. There's none that understandeth. There's none that seeketh after God. Everything that you do, all your good works are unprofitable. Okay, what about the New World Translation? What does it say? Well, we'll go here. Romans chapter 3, verse 10. Just as it is written, There is not a righteous man, not even one. There is no one that has any insight. There is no one that seeks for God. All men have def deflected. Well, that's clear. All of them together have become worthless. There is not, no one that does kindness. There is not so much as one. Okay, not very clear. All right, now we're going to go down. I'll read first the King James Bible. Romans chapter 3, verse 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Right there. The redemption that's in Christ Jesus. What does this thing say? The New World Translation. Uh, where are we at here? Verse 23, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and it is as a free gift that they are being declared, not are, but they are being declared righteous by His undeserved kindness through the release by the ransom paid by Christ Jesus. Again, you see how the, dis the verses are being distorted here? Okay. Notice it says there, the free gift that they are being declared. See, this is a continuous act right there. Being. You know, the Catholics are into this type of thing. And their manuscripts are the ones that underlie this new version. Same thing with the NIV, the New American Standard. A lot of these new versions, 
it's Catholic manuscripts. You trace it back, it goes back to Vaticanus, back to the Catholic Church. See, they want to keep a system of works, just like the Jehovah's Witnesses. You have to work yourself to heaven. Our being, it says there. But look at this again, verse 24. Being justified freely by His grace. You say, well, it says being there, but it doesn't say our being. Okay, this is saying it's finished. Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. You see, there's a big difference between our being declared and being justified. This happens once at salvation. You better get a hold of that thing. Now we're going to go over here to Romans chapter 6, verse 23. You can see here Romans 6, verse 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans 6.23 and the New World Translation. For the wages sin pays is death. Doesn't even make sense. Wages sin pays is death. But the gift uh, God gives is everlasting life by Christ Jesus our Lord. Interesting there because it says here in uh, the King James Bible, it says... The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You get to heaven by Jesus Christ. There's none other name given among men, given under there's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Right there. That's your way to heaven through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the door. Okay, but here in this New World Translation, it's just by Christ Jesus. Not through, but by. A couple more verses here and then we're done. Get that thing out of the way again. Romans chapter 10. Again, you have chapter 11 because right there is chapter 11. But Romans chapter 10 Verses 9, and we're going to read down through that. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. What does the New World Translation say? I hate to guess. Romans chapter 10, verse 9. For if you publicly declare that word in your own mouth, that Jesus is Lord, and exercise faith in your heart, exercise faith, hmm, uh, in your heart that God raised him up from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one exercises faith for righteousness, but with the mouth one makes public declaration for salvation. Now, this is obviously pretty far off from what the King James Bible says. But uh, can you see any other way of salvation in these verses here than belief in Jesus Christ? I can't. I would never recommend the New World Translation, but even the New World Translation is saying Jesus is Lord. Okay? He's God. And they can't change all the references to Lord to Jehovah. But the fact is, Jesus is Lord and God is Lord. Okay? Now, let me just say, I'll show you the King James reading here again. If I can get it on camera here. Right here is how you get saved. Right here. Thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And you say, well, I don't know if I can get saved. 
For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. What's the name of the Lord? Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus Christ is God manifest in the flesh. And there's a lot more proof of that I didn't get into in this video. But right here, this is the Bible that years ago Jehovah's Witnesses used. But you see, this one here is the real Bible. And it doesn't matter how many notes that you put in it and how many things saying, well, this isn't accurate and whatever else. Eventually, you're going to have somebody that's going to read it and they're going to see from the text of the King James Bible that the Jehovah's Witness system is not true. And that's why the Jehovah's Witnesses departed from the King James Bible and went over here. They went to the Roman Catholic Church to get a corrupted Nestle's text to write the New World Translation. And even with the corrupt text, they still couldn't translate it exactly the way the corrupt text reads. They had to change words and meanings like I showed you to get a perverted set of scriptures, one of the worst out there. Okay? This will not lead you to the truth. This will not lead you to the truth. This book right here will. Not because this was put out by the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society, but because this is the book that Bible-believing Christians use. Okay? This is the King James Bible. This is what I use and what I preach from. This is the only one that will lead you into the truth. Right there is what you need. You need a personal relationship with Jesus Christ and an understanding of Him through the King James Bible. Right there.